All right, this is a video for section 2.1b. If you haven't watched the video for section 2.1a, you might want to go back and look at it. In the last video, we made it to page 34 in our workbook where we were calculating 10% and 1% on uh, different numbers. So 10% moves the decimal one spot to the left and 1% moves it two small spots to the left. So let's just review that concept here. So if we're finding 10% of 20, the decimal's right here. We're going to move one decimal place to the left, and we're just left with two. Uh, remember, 10% is the same as dividing by 10. To put it into 10 chunks, 10% of it, uh, which, of course, would be 20 divided by 10 is 2. Uh, it's also 0 0.1 times 20, and you can check that on your calculator. So if 10% is moving one decimal place to the left, 1% is going to be smaller. We're going to move two decimal places to the left and end up with 0.2 much smaller number. Same idea comes when 10% of 179.95. We're going to take this decimal and move it one decimal place to the left, and we end up at 17.995. If we're going to move 1%, we're going to move one two decimal places to the left, and we end up at 1.7995. So that's a review of, what, of the big ideas from 2.1a. Now we're just going to also, one other idea that we did there is finding 10% and 5%. So 10% would be just like what we did up here. 10% of 60, move one decimal place to the left is 6. But 5%, well, 5% is half of 10%. So 5% would be half of this number as well. So half of 6 is 3. And so finding 5% is pretty quick and easy. This, this concept is going to be something we're going to need and be and use for what we're going to do in the next section, where we're going to be estimating tax. So remember, tax is 13%. HST is 13% in Ontario. And so we're going to estimate it by using some of these quick numbers that we've figured out in the last section. So we're going to do this example here. This isn't in your workbook. We're just going to watch and learn from here, and then we'll fill in our workbook in a second. We're going to estimate the after-tax price on $39.95. So why would we want to do this? Well, we know that if we go and buy something and we know it's $39.95, we want to make sure we have enough money in our pocket before we get to the cashier. Because it would be embarrassing if we ran out of money. Uh, 40 bucks, I don't think, is enough. Uh, the tax is going to be more. It's going to put the price over $40. So I want to make sure that I have enough. So I'm going to do some estimating to guess how much money I need to have so that I feel confident going up to the cash register if I just have cash. So first thing we're going to do, since we're estimating, I'm not going to do calculations on $39.95. I'm going to do it on a much nicer number. I'm going to do it on $40. I'm going to round it to $40. It makes the math much more manageable. So the first, we, there's actually two methods that we're going to explore today. The first is we're going to method one is we're going to make a pretty good estimate of 13%. But instead of doing the math of 13% or, or calculating that, maybe we don't have a calculator in our hands, we're going to break this 13% up into 10% and then three ones and say it's 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 would get us the 13%. So why did I choose 10 and 1%? Well, because that's going to be just like what we figured out over here in the last section. So the $40 is 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 10% on $40 is just 4. Move one decimal place to the left. 1%, we're going to move two decimal places. So move it over here and here is 40 cents. And so now we're going to take these and add it up to figure out what our after-tax price is going to be. So the 40 cents... We're going to take the 40 cents plus 40 cents plus 40 cents. So 40 cents and 40 cents is 80 cents plus another 40 cents is $1.20. So we know this much adds up to $1.20. That's the 3%, the 1, the 1, and the 1. Then we've got 10% plus, we can't forget, the original price. So these two numbers here are going to be the tax plus the original price. So 40 plus $4 gets us 44, plus another one gets us to 45, and 20 more cents gets us $45.20. And so that's our estimate of how much this thing is actually going to cost when we walk up to the cash register. So that's a great method to quickly figure out, in your head even, 
how much tax we'll need or how much money we'll need. There's a second method. And in the second method, instead of finding 13%, we're going to find 15%. I know 15% is bigger, and the estimate's going to be a little bit higher. But if we have enough money for this estimate, we'll definitely have enough money when the cal calculator actually figures it out. Well, why am I interested in finding 5%? Well, 5% is going to be 10%, just like we did here and in the last day, but also 5%. And 5% is pretty easy to find because it's just half of 10%. So instead, we're going to look at the 15 as 10 plus, 15 plus 5. So 10% on $40, one less, is 4. Or one to the left, excuse me, is $4. And 5%... We don't need to do anything else. We just take half of $4. Half of $4 is $2. And we'll add that up. So 4 plus 2 is 6 bucks. That's a really good estimate. Plus on tax, plus the $40 gets us $46 as our estimate. So if I've got $46, I know that I've definitely got enough money to pay for this item. You can see this is more accurate because you're actually calculating 13% versus 15%. But I think you might agree that this math is much easier. Just finding half of this and adding these two numbers as opposed to small decimals like this and having to add it all up. Both of these are estimates. The actual price is $45.14. And we can see, of course, this is closer than this one is because we're actually counting 13%. They're both a little high because we did the estimate on $40, not $39.95. But regardless, these are two quick and easy ways to estimate if we're going to have enough money to pay for something. Let's try another example. This time, let's look at something for $79.50. So you're already thinking in your head, I hope. I'm not going to look at math on that. I'm going to do the math on $80 instead. Let's use both methods. 13% is going to be the 10 plus the three ones. What's 10% of 80? the decimal place one spot it's eight one percent will move two spots is 0.8 and so we get 0.8 for each of these now we have to add all these up well 80 cents plus 80 cents is dollar 60 plus another 80 is two dollars and 40 cents so our after tax price is going to be 80 dollars plus eight more is 80 eight plus two more is 90, and then the 40 cents is $90.40. So the reason this is okay is because finding 10% and 1% is pretty easy. We just spent a whole day on it. But an even easier method is 15%. 10% of 80, move one decimal place, is eight, or sorry, 10% is eight. And then 5% is just gonna be half of that is four. And so if we need the final price, we're going to take 80 plus 8 is 88 plus 4 more gets us to 92. And our estimate is a really good and close number to what the actual tax price is of $89.94. Okay, so let's go to our workbook now. We're going to go to page 35. So page 35 is going to look like this. And on 35, we're going to formally write down all of the estimating that we just did in those two examples. You'll see there's method one and method two. So we're estimating the after-tax cost on something that Kareem's buying. He's considering buying a guitar. And the price of the guitar is $179.99. He's got $200 cash with him. But he's a little nervous that that's not enough. So he's going to use these two methods to predict if he's got enough money to pay for it. So we know that $179.99 is the price, and we're going to pay 13% HST in Ontario. Let's, instead of doing the math on $179.99, we're going to do it on $180. So first, 10% of this. We're going to move one decimal place to the left is 18 bucks. 1%, we're going to move two decimal places, and it's $1.80. Now, how many of these 1%s do we need? Well, we need three of them. 
Remember, we've got the 10% plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 to get 13. So the estimated tax then is going to be your $18 from this, and then you need three of these. So you're going to go three times $1.18 and add those together. So three times $1.18, again, this makes it a little bit harder to do in our head, but three $1.80s is $5.40. Plus the 10%, which is 18, gets us $23.40 in tax. So we add that estimated tax to the rounded price. So we've got our 2340 is our estimated tax. Our estimated price is 180. Add those up and you get $203.40. So Kareem, who only has $20 in, or sorry, $200 in cash, isn't going to have enough money. Let's try method two. Still 13%, and we're still going to round it to $180. But hopefully you'll see that this is quite a little bit easier. 10%, one decimal place to the left, is 18. 5% is going to be half of that at $9. Add those two dollars, add those two amounts up, 18 plus 9 is $27. So then the price is going to be the 180 plus the $27 in tax for a total of $207. A higher estimate than what we had before, but still, he doesn't have enough money to pay for this. He doesn't have enough cash to pay for this. So you can see why this would be valuable in order to do this quick calculation in our head, estimate if we'd have enough money to pay for an item after the tax is included. Okay, flip over to page 37 now. So we've been talking about the two different methods for calculating the HST, either doing the 13%, which is 10, and 1, and 1, and 1, or doing 15% estimate, even though it's higher than 13, and going 10, and half of it is 5. But I think through this math that we've done here and in the other questions, you'll probably agree with me that method 2 is much easier. It's easier to find 10% of a number and then half of that to estimate your after-tax cost. So we're going to complete this um, chart on page 37, and that's where we'll end. But I'll do the first uh, example with you, and then I'll give you some time to try the other ones on your own. So $59.95. Again, we're not going to do the estimate on that. We're going to round that to $60. And the method we're going to use to estimate the uh, HST is going to be find 10% and half of it as 5%. So. 10% of 60, move the decimal place one spot, is just 6. Half of 6 is 3. And so, if we wanted to calculate our tax, we're going to have the $60 estimate plus 6 plus 3 gets us to $69 in total. Just add these three numbers up, and we have an estimate. It's a little bit higher than what it actually is, but a good estimate of what the cost is. Okay. So you've seen a bunch of examples of this using this method. I'm going to ask you to push pause in the video now and try these three questions in your workbook. And when you're completed, push play again and we'll check our answers. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to try these ones on our own. Let's check and see how you did. $78.49. I'm going to round that up to $80. It's much easier to work with. 10% of $80 is one decimal place to the left is eight bucks. Half of eight bucks is four bucks. Add these all up together. 80 plus eight is 88, plus four more gets us to 92. And we have a really quick, reasonable estimate of how much the actual after-tax cost of this item is. How about 149.99? Rounded to the nearest dollars, 150. Much easier number to work with. 10% of 150, move the decimal place left, is $15. Half of 15 is 7.5. And add all of these up. 150 plus the $15 plus $7.50. And we'll have an estimate of $172.50. Finally, 
249.99, much easier to calculate on 25, $250. 10% of that, move the decimal once, is 25. Half of 25 is $14, $12.50. Add all that up, and we get $287.50. So hopefully the ones that you tried on your own match those estimates. Now before we stop, I want to remind you that this is all method two. We could have estimated using method one. So for example, let's try method one on $80. So $80, we're going to do 10%. 10% of 80 is just eight bucks. So we know that much. 1%, you're going to move decimal place two spots, is 80 cents or 0.8. Remember, if we're calculating this is 1%, we're going to need three of them because it is 1% plus 1% plus 1% gets us three more percent. So 0.8 times 3 is equal to $2.40. And now we'll take the $80 plus the 10% plus the three 1%s and add all that together to get $90.40. So remember, method one is a little bit more accurate estimate, $90.40, than method two. But method two is a little bit quicker and easier. And will give us some confidence. If I've got $92 in my pocket, I know I've got enough money to pay for this. All right. We're going to stop uh, halfway through page 36. I know there's some more work underneath on page 36, but we'll do that in the next video uh, where we'll actually be calculating the exact uh, tax price. Instead of doing these estimates, we're going to find a way to calculate the exact HST and how much our after-tax price is on different items. Good luck.